welcome to Tell the Journalist, your first episode happening right here in Durban. This is a show that serves to uh, debate political concerns, community concerns at all levels, with only one interest, the public interest. In this particular episode, we tackle the conversation, 24 years post-democracy, what has South Africa done? Whether we are speaking about communities in the health spectrum of, of things, whether we're speaking political or we're speaking social cohesion. In this particular show, we speak to politicians and in our midst, we have politicians, we have unions, we also have um, a pastor who will speak on a religious perspective and a political analyst. We take a short break, introduce you to your panel. Stay with us. asking you what are your political concerns or community concerns that you wish discussed on the show and then we will certainly have a big show once a week which is likely to be Friday where we have an audience based and a call in but the other show during the week will just serve you as our social media um, partners asking questions and telling us what your public concerns are and before the break we did introduce to you the topic and the topic is 24 years post-democracy, South Africa, what have we done? And to discuss this particular item, we have today the politicians and unions in the studio. Thank you very much there at home for anticipating, tell the journalist, and expecting it to come your way and downloading all those mobile apps that you've downloaded on your phones and expecting us. We are so grateful. We promise you to keep you buckled up to keep you with riveted conversations right here on Tell the Journalist. Well, thank you very much, panel, for coming through. Um, 
as, as explained today, our topic is 24 years post-democracy and what has South Africa done. And in our midst, um, of course, we'll run through the panel. Um, we have the absence of, of three uh, panel um, expected um, representatives here, which is quite a shame um, that uh, representing bodies of such big unions and political parties do not take robust conversations seriously. Would it then possibly be that it is because Tell the Journalist is a small talk show? It is because it is um, being run by an unknown journalist? We ask all of these questions and if that is the reason, then we simply go and ask the correct questions and we say to ourselves, is it really democracy that these entities are interested in or is it the mesmerization by the journalist? they speak to, or is it perhaps um, the platforms in which they... Therefore, the members here today display that in their parties, in their various entities, they are interested in the public interest. So we thank uh, the parties and the uh, representatives that have arrived here today, took the show seriously, and have ensured that they've come to engage with you and engage with the audience. So right here to, with us here today, among the requested um, invitees in our panel, we do have um, to discuss the show with us, um, the EFF um, leader in legislation, Mr. Vusi Koza. Thank you very much for coming through to the show. Um, the IFP spokesperson has certainly decided to be in absentia and um, having actually confirmed arrival, um, we do take note to that and I think that certainly does not speak to democracy because where is the IFP? The IFP should be here making its voice heard because it goes to ballots and it expects people to vote, cast a vote against the IFP but the IFP is not here to make its voice. That is quite a concern um, on the public interest issue. We certainly we have also another one in absentia, um, that's the DA, the Democratic Alliance, also having confirmed and showed quite an anxiousness during the week and uh, um, interest in participating in the show. But suddenly, while the show happens, the Democratic Alliance um, is a no-shower. So this is going to be a show with an empty seat. It's the first of its kind never done, but we are anticipating a show with an empty seat due to the fact that um, the conversations that are going to be taking place in the show are not for the faint-hearted. So certainly those who do pitch up, take you seriously and take public interest seriously. Um, we do have in our midst um, Mr. Mandla, the ANC's provincial, um, provincial, the ANC's provincial uh, spokesperson for the Youth League. Um, thank you very much for having honored this particular show. Dr. Diaco Dienzens from the Apareco prov um, the, uh, Provincial uh, President, thank you very much on behalf of the Congolese in the country uh, for having coming through to the show. Um, we have the religious representative, uh, Pastor Tami uh, Mahlaba. Thank you so much for coming through to represent Christianity and religion in this particular crucial discussion. Civil society, um, um, head of the youth in Etegwini um, here in Guazulu Natal, South Africa, Durban. Thank you so much for coming through, Uzi. And we thank very much um, Kosi Kona um, Pungose for having come through um, again. The political analyst that we have here today is Mr. Ayanda Meiwa. I'm not sure how many of you around the world know this young man, but this is certainly a face and a name you want to remember. I have been in some of the um, uh, conferences or rather... Um, sessions where he had been the, 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 the keynote address speaker and I certainly was struck by his mind as a young person. This is very important to drive the age that really does matter. We take a short break. When we come back, I will not speak and you will hear 60 seconds from each one of these individuals telling you 24 years post-democracy, what have they done? Stay with us.
watching Tell the Journalist, a show that will have always an empty seat of some representative that was not quite strong enough or ready to sit before you and answer the tough questions we will ask here on Tell the Journalist. If you've just joined us, you are not only on Tell the Journalist, but you're on the CW Connect World Television online TV station platform where we will be live streaming to you every single week and giving you a different subtopic with the main topic being 24 years post-democracy, South Africa, what have we done? And of course, we are celebrating 100 years of Nelson Mandela and we certainly will be having a subtopic as one of those in the next upcoming shows. Today, we certainly did introduce to you before the show uh, the political parties and unions that have decided to pitch up. We also have detailed to you or rather declared those that were faint-hearted and did not pitch up to discuss this particular show with us right here today. So before the break, we did say that we will give 60 seconds to our panel and each one of them will give you a perspective in 60 seconds of what has been done by South Africa 24 years post-democracy. Remember, we will have a segment where we will have the studio audience um, give the questions that they have posing those questions to the panel. We will also have um, an open session where we have a line that you can now send um, messages to that we will read right here live on the show. And the telephone number to look out for is plus two seven, of course, if you're outside of South Africa. If you are in the Republic of South Africa, it is 082-872-1332. I repeat that number for you if you're outside of South Africa, plus two seven and eight two. 8721332 and now we are going to have the panel in 67 in 60 seconds give you what they have done in 24 years post democracy your time starts now it is my opinion that in south africa for the past 24 years we've been to, through too many macroeconomic um, strategies and all of them short-lived, too short-lived to actually see the lasting impact and adjust accordingly. Our lack of, in, of consistency has led to our failure to address the three policy challenges of inequality, unemployment and poverty. Thank you. You may pass it over to civil society. Well, thank you so much. Um, my voice will be based on civil society. Um, I don't think we have been given enough platform as civil society, especially by a government, to implement whatever that we have to make sure that our South Africa is moving forward. Uh, well, for some particular reason. Also, I will also base this on my view. Um, civil society has been actually uh, shut down. We cannot speak freely, um, and we cannot also be as neutral as we can as possible in order for us to remain a civil society, especially when we're addressing political party or government, because that's actually what we are. We need to be neutral and we need to make sure that our government is accounting on whatever promise that they've made. So that's what we stand for as civil society and also to make sure that even political parties on the ground, they deliver on what they promise to the society. So that is exactly what hasn't have done Thank you. yet. Yes, uh, representing the religious sector. Uh, let me say firstly, because when you, when you speak to uh, the community as a religious leader, you speak on a social aspect. Uh, so I'll be quoting some stuff that are not like in a religious, some are in the political and economic. We, uh, th there's been a good job done since 94, and but there are issues that when we step on, we see that the real freedom we haven't yet experienced. Uh, somebody said, when you want to do something, when the child is, is around, you must keep the child busy. 45 seconds, make a point. Yes, you must uh, keep, make the child to be, uh, keep the child busy. So we've been busy with more entertainment than information in the country. And so the, the thing that has happened when it comes to religion now is the culture shock. The culture shock which produced more 
uh, uh, more immorality. Your time is up. Well, you'll, you'll elaborate on, on your turn to elaborate. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for, for the show. Um, I'm t speaking on behalf of APARECO, which is a, a DRC uh, organization that are based abroad. And what South Africa has uh, really done in the last 24 years, let me say that uh, uh, a democracy cannot be completed in 24 years, but we know that South Africa has done a lot of, a lot of, a lot of things to, uh, to, to implement the processes of democracy. But I think it is impossible for, 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 for a country to put a democracy in, tw in 24 years, but uh, 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 there are a lot of things that have been done, though 45 a lot of seconds. As, as well, that uh, the leaders of the country are doing their best to bring uh, the, the, the country into a democratic uh, way of leading. Thank you very much. No, thank you very much. Well, uh, I think South Africa, since uh, democratic dis dispensation, uh, we have uh, achieved quite a lot of things, uh, taking into cognizance that we, 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 we entered into a democratic dispensation with a bankruptcy government. Part of the major assignments that the democratic government had to do was to develop policies that are going to aid in making sure that we stabilize the country and make sure that there is a growth in terms of the economy so that we are able to therefore give society what they deserve, what has been obviously not been given to the society by the apartheid system. So definitely there are many things that the, 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 the ANC government have delivered to the people. Seconds. Obviously, we, we do appreciate that uh, there are certain things that has not been done uh, obviously, because we, we need to consider certain things in terms of the development. Thank, Thank you. Much. Thank you very much. For, 20, for almost 20 years after democracy, South Africa went to sleep. The ruling party was busy enjoying the spoils, stealing and looting whatever was left after apartheid. It's only in four years that EFF arrived in the arena. We pushed pay, pay back the money. We got Zuma to pay back the money. We said free quality education, we delivered on that. We said the Guptas must go. They are a problem. They are running away now from their crime. We said Zuma will fall. Zuma is gone. We say expropriation of land without compensation. We've delivered on that. 45 seconds. It is only through EFF that South Africa has moved forward and in the last four years. Thank you, EFF. We take a short break and when we come back, let's unpack what the panel has just unpacked to you. Stay with us. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, you are on CWTV. If you would like to uh, join in on this wonderful discussion and many more to come, you log yourself down to www.cw-tv.net and you will find that we are live on that platform. If you also would like to have our mobile app, which is actually
actually the home for our uh, broadcast. You download it through the Play Store, uh, say CWTV, and join the thousands that have certainly done so and that are watching us here today. Before the break, we had the political parties tell you in 60 seconds what their particular entities have done, as well as the unions, um, a religious rep, and a political analyst. They told you what their concerns are in 60 seconds, and some certainly gave more praises and rather none. So now we're going to um, kind of stretch a little more further on some of the concerns or the comments they made during their 60 seconds. Um, okay, so much was said. And I think that the first point of um, negotiation communication in this part is one thing that has come across from the greater portion of you as I think rather praises or recognition of what the South African government has achieved in 24 years. I think that's one thing that definitely is seamless here. But with um, seclusions, the cultural um, um, issue came across from the pastor that there's a cultural shock. And from Uzi, uh, from civil society, Sambungo say he um, spoke a bit elaboratively on the fact that the South African government as civil society, they do not feel uh, included in, 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 and obviously we're going to have him elaborate on that and let's have more discussion on that. Um, but they're not included. So that's basically the voice that came across. We also had a voice from the political analyst speaking about issues of inequality that have been set aside and that obviously the government needs to work on certain, certain issues such as that. And we had the ANC uh, representative um, spokesperson tell of what uh, the many uh, deliveries that the 24 years by the leading political party in South Africa, the African National Congress, has actually done. So when we open up this platform just in a few minutes um, for the audience to speak, we want to hear a challenge to the ANC because this is the leading party in the last 24 years. So actually, this conversation is very much centered around the ANC, what and what they haven't delivered. So that is really basically that. And so so the counterparts will have a chance to challenge that and will have the audience have a chance. We'll also have the EFF brought through what the EFF has managed to do for the public um, in their perspective, that is, that they have achieved a number of, of challenges to step down the, the former president of South Africa, uh, uh, President Jacob Zuma, um, bring justice to quite a number of, of issues such as the Guptas and, and, and so forth. So I'm going to certainly just ask for more elaboration that is going to come through from, from all of you. Now, let's come closer, let's bring it closer to home. If we say, I'm going to um, just basically bring a challenge. The ANC has given a list of the deliverables by the ANC in the last 24 years. So do we agree? I think that's the first that we need to, to actually ask ourselves. The spokesperson has delivered what the ANC has done. Do we agree that that is what the ANC has done? Um, in, a, in a few seconds, I would like to understand, and if we all have agreed, are you in unison in this particular aspect, or do you challenge what 24 years of democracy has been um, by the ANC? Perhaps we begin with the AFF. Thank you very much. Um, in the last 24 years, you'll understand that when the ANC came in, it was started by religious leaders and traditional leaders. It was very clear on what needs to happen. Fast forward to democracy in 1994. When they got in having replaced an oppressive apartheid regime, they saw it as an opportunity to loot and enrich themselves first. Everything came to a standstill. The culture shock that the pastor is talking about, it's immorality that was brought about by the ANC. Why? Because it didn't have a plan to say how is it going to build coherence in terms of the moral direction that the country should take. They mixed communism with uh, Christianity and capitalism. It was a mishmash. The country lost direction. That, that is where we ended up. So I am saying what you can attribute as a label for the ANC's 24 years on power is corruption, looting, and landlessness and poverty for the majority of the people who are black. Thank you very much.
perhaps we will end with you considering that you are the center of attention here today 24 years of democracy let us hear what the um the congolese from a french perspective or the perspective of foreign nationals in the country 24 years post-democracy um, what has South Africa done to assist foreign nationals to stabilize their own countries to ensure the less influx coming through into the country I think that's what um, would be most relevant as in 24 years to say what has the country done to assist stabilization in your countries because that didn't come through in your opening in 60 seconds so I think I'd like to hear that perspective and many foreign nationals are possibly wanting to hear that thank you very much for that and I think it is very important that we talk about it we know that uh, South Africa is a very uh, very well stabilized country because it's proud of that and the democracy is going very well unfortunately I think uh, South Africa is contributing to the destabilization of the Congo of the DRC and I'm not saying it how so on, a, on an emotional uh, way but the, 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 the South Africa is contributing in a way that there are individuals that have interest in the DRC, who have troops in the DRC, who are guarding their mines, and, and, and the South African government has provided uh, soldiers in the DRC who are part of the, 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 the United Nations keep, keep, uh, keeping force that are doing nothing. They're getting paid for nothing. This is tell and the journalist. We don't hold names here. I, so who are these people? Tell us who they are. Shame them. You, you who are know, they? You know that President Zuma has a, a businesses in the DRC, and his, 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 his nephew called uh, uh, Kulubu Sezuma has, has, has secured... And what is his name? Which, which was his kid? Kulubu Sezuma is his nephew. He is a mining magnate there. Our own security forces are cutting their mines in TRC. They are part of the conflict there. Yes, these are things that are very well known, but they, no one talks about it. And not only President Zuma, they also Tabumbet who has got interest in the DRC. And what I'm afraid about is that the new president has come in, in the throne, President Ramaphosa will be involved in the same way because these people show that South Africa is stable, but they are involved in destabilizing the other countries. So when you find war in the DRC, you must know that these people are involved and, and the parliament knows that. But even the EFF is not talking about it. Why, how how can, we, can you people, how can the parties in, the, in this country who are proud of the, the, the democracy in this country help us to... to to implement policies of okay. democracy in our country. So in simple terms, as far as you are concerned, the South African government, being the ANC, in 24 years has not ensured the protection of foreign nationals in their own country uh, through their actions here in South Africa. Yes, of course, because if they encourage the, the democracy Thank processes you. in these countries, I think many people will stay in their countries and be happy in their countries instead of coming Thank to you. South Africa. Thank you very much. Uh, Pastor, let us hear your part. Yeah. Back on to, to, to culture shock is that um, you must understand that when we took over in 94, we had a victory, political victory, partly, very partly, but we didn't have a system. So the white man said, here's a system, democracy. Now, the, the truth is, we didn't fight for democracy, we fought for freedom. Now, democracy is like bread. Uh, Western culture is like the plastic that is covering the bread. So we, especially black people, we ate both the bread and the plastic. Now the plastic is, cho is choking us. Democracy is not an <laughs> African idea. It's a Greek idea from Aristotle. He's a philosopher. Now we do have minds in Africa. We just need to convert the philosopher of Africa into systems. We had power politically, but we didn't have the system though also the political power was partly, it's quite a journey, it's a long journey, eating one bit after another. Each of land now, which is a bit each uh, uh, banking system, th those are all important. So are those the attributes in your view that, um, that showcase 
uh, going back to what the EFF stated that the only thing that uh, the South Africa in the ANC government has managed to do in 24 years is to loot, uh, corrupt, and so on. So in your perspective, from mm. having said mm. that we, ha we didn't fight for democracy, we fought for freedom. Yes. What then is your, what is the reference? Reference that to the statement made by the, a the EFF, which we will now challenge. Okay, let me say this. I, thi I think, uh, let me not single out ANC and single out uh, whichever other party. Let's, let me say us South Africans, because it boils down to humanity, human, human needs. It boils down to that. Human needs are more important than politics. Human needs also formulate politics, political ethics, okay? L let me come to that. The, 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 the issues that, that make freedom to be real, when, when, when they are touched now, there's so much shaking, especially in the white community. Awesome. An another side of morality is that the, 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 the white community hasn't yet been true to themselves. How, how can we live, live together in harmony? That, that's a motto. We, live together, we have to live together in harmony. Mm -hmm. How can we live together in harmony if you still own my land? Uh, you still haven't given me ownership in your company, but you've given me a salary. When I scream about the small raise, th there's a chaos. But let's talk about ownership. Okay. Let, let's talk about shareholding. Let's talk about yeah, yeah. St okay. stakeholding. Yeah. Okay. I think well, that is also another another topic coming up on subtopics in yes. CWTV that yeah. we're looking at saying if we're saying this ownership that we keep talking about exactly. as South Africans, yeah. are we really ready for this ownership? Do we really know what to do with this ownership? Would this ownership not actually kill our democracy? Would this ownership not actually kill the very freedom that you um, elaborated yes, on yes. having fought for as South Africans? What is this actual ownership that we are seeking? Um, so, so we'll zoom into that um, on another show. So today, so you've made your point in saying that basically in your respect, as far as you speak of democracy, that's the stance of the church. Exactly. Awesome. Can we hear from civil society? Um, thank you so much. Um, one should recognize um, the work being done post-democracy, uh, if we're looking at where actually we're coming from. But within that, we also shouldn't ignore what um, my brother from the EFF has alluded to say. This is what is happening, because it's on a public. It's not like it's it, it, it based on different political but it's on a public it's all over the news we are watching and we are seeing you know um, corruption happening down from our ward level up until the parliament you see and when I said that government hasn't given us enough yes, space was, yeah, yeah. To, to actually to voice out uh, um, 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 what actually we want or our needs in their presence <clears throat> is that when I, I think again it's a system when they say there's a thing, when we're governing things from the ward, when we say we have a ward committee, you know, once you have a ward committee and you start ignoring that within the ward, you have organizations that are forming civil society there. And you don't consult, you know, there's no consultation there. You're only dealing with the team that is a ward committee and whatever decision that you make within okay. the team. So what do you feel, I, I, hear, I hear you, but what do you feel that, or what would your wishes be for um, the civil society voice to be heard um, by the government, or for you as civil society to feel your presence in, within the legislations of the government, the bylaws, is it, are you going to talk about the implementation, are you involved in implementation, are you um, informed about changes what is it exactly that if you pinpoint at per your concern what are you saying that the government the ANC this is the government right here what are they not doing what are you telling him they're not doing specifically and what is it that they need to do specifically to ensure that you as civil society feel in the rap inclusive involved and as a part of the um, of, of the decision making of the city, province, uh, locally, nationally, etc. It's the walk, the walk. See, they only talk, they don't actually implement. In KZN, uh, our former premier, Dr. Zolim Kiz, started 
uh, Operation Sumo Massacre, which is known as OSS. Mm. That is now national. That was the best ever idea that South Africa we came about. You know, bringing civil society, bringing an ordinary person that lives on the street, that actually is a vendor on the street, to sit in the very same room with government representatives. You know, that was a very great strategy that came about. But it's not happening. It's there on paper. It's there on their calendar. But it's actually not happening in our world where we live. That is what I'm talking about. If a simple thing as that is not happening, how about then having a civil society voice in coming up with new policies and okay. making sure that they actually apply their policies in their governments. So it isn't the policies, it's implementation. Implementation. Awesome. And consultation as well. Thank you very much um, to our political analyst, Mr. Mewa. Yes, thank you again for that. Um, I said earlier that we've been through so many macroeconomic strategies and all of them so short-lived that we do not really see the lasting impact. So we've been moving from one document, you know, from the RDP to the ASKISA and the GIE and etc. But I do not believe proper diagnosis of the previous policy has been, had been made in order like how did it affect or how was it supposed to affect society instead of just jump from one idea to the next. And it seems because society you see is made of a social contract. There must be an agreement between those who are in the administrative level and those who are in the operational level and those who are the general citizenship. We vote, but that seems to be the only time that the general citizenship seems to have anything. And before we vote, we actually have the fear of God put in our heart so that if we vote anything different, we are likely to become like Zimbabwe or all of these other failed post-liberation uh, post states of Africa. So what is the point that I'm making? In South Africa, the ANC has been ruling for the past 24, but yes, it was given a bankrupt state. And it has made a lot of progress, despite the many budget deficits and the increasing national debt, which personally I don't think should be a problem, the national debt. But in that, in trying to make something work, we've been so careful not to speak black. We've been so careful not to speak our own ideas, as the pastor did mention. We've not really been talking about what does an African want? What does an African want to build? But what does an African want? Does the African know what the African wants? That's Can the African point? handle what the African wants? I, I think perhaps, yes. perhaps the questions, perhaps the questions aren't really. Um, can the African, but does the African actually know the, imp the, 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 Im the implications of what the African wants? Uh, I think that's just, just a point I'm thinking is also a zoom in area that needs to also be a progressive discussion that needs to, to take place. Does the African know what the African wants? Is the African prepared for what the African may be given? That's the question. So back on what you just said earlier, you spoke about the fact that we're hopping from document to document, that rather the, 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 the government, our government is hopping from one document to the other. So there's some of the questions that I'd like him to speak about or rather elaborate on what the ANC has to say, to say about that. And I think that that's a very important zoom in area that you've come up with there. Can you um, tell us what you feel that the ANC or what your proposal as a political analyst you feel um, he can take to his office and, and say, during this deliberation, this question came up, and the question of the fact that we're hopping from one document to the other um, is, is, is how exactly? Give us one example of a document hopping example, and that we hopped the, the party, the national government hopped from this document, and they did not zoom into, um, I think, what you're also meaning just for uh, simple-minded people out there, um, I think the political analyst is trying to say to you that the government makes policies um, and, and, and they don't give it a chance after they've made those policies, policies and, and they've run the length that they've had to run, have a, an unpacking, an autopsy situation where they sit back and say, let's unpack. Has 
does this actually work? Does this policy work? Does the structures that we've placed, have the structures we've placed worked for the communities or not? Because remember, tell the journalists is really about the community, hardcore community stuff that we discuss here. So this show sensitizes that. The concerns we've all made here are really bottom. They are right at the bottom. They speak community concerns. We've got cultural uh, problems there coming up that we can see that clearly the government has to zoom into that. We're also looking at what you're talking about. You've come across with a weak link, which I think is probably the mother of all problems and possibly the, <laughs> the biggest issue that needs to be looked at by the, the, the government. So um, tell me, what is it that you're telling the NC, having figured out as a political analyst, what is it that they need to do and give us one example of what they haven't done and how they could have done it. Allow me to give a contemporary example, especially in view of the current uh, transition uh, of power. Under the Zuma administration, we've been talking the developmental states, the democratic developmental states. Not very common among the world, but it's a borrowed concept from the East Asian uh, success stories like your Malaysia. And Right now, we are no longer saying anything about the democratic developmental state. Under the Zuma administration, Zuma was, as I like to say, speaking black, like about, okay, how do we actually put the black man in power? How do we give resources there too? But right now, what we are talking about, we're actually going back to the neoliberal perspective, which was very much the same under Tabon Begi. It's where it seems Cyril Ramaphosa and his rhetoric is going back to. So what about everything that had been done with regard to putting the state-owned enterprises at the forefront of economic development? What about that? Now that we are talking about increasing privatization or private stakeholders in public enterprises, that is not very much characteristic of the development state, which has state-owned entities and also other key resources as drivers of economic development and industrialization. Under the Mbegi administration, just to conclude, we actually saw, uh, sorry, not under the Mbegi one, in the mid-90s, under Mandela, we saw a lot of uh, sale of state assets. Why? Probably because the government had, was bankrupt. So we sold a lot of things, including key industries like our foundry, our steel, we had ISCO, now we have metal, metal steel, which is largely now internationally. So owned. what should what should the government do? What do you want the ANC to do to address what you feel is the weak link? And you've pointed out something also, you made examples of the current president, our current president, Cyril Ramaphosa. You also made an example of the actions by Jacob Zuma, the perspectives or the actions by Jacob Zuma. So let's have a look at what you are actually saying in comparison of these two presidents. Are you then saying, with your wording, that is with your wording, it sounds that you are saying the agenda changes from one president to the other. The agenda changes. So is it the agenda about the public, for the public, or is the agenda about um, what is it about? So perhaps you, you, you're, you're the analyst, yeah? You're, the, you're our analyst. So, so seeing that that's your observation, and clearly explained and with good examples. Tell us what then you feel are therefore then the descriptive examples um, that of the two, the, the description um, that resembles what you then uh, label the two presidents to have a difference. The indifference between the two's perspectives. What does it then say? Does it speak personal? Does it speak public? To whom? The agenda, let me answer that, has always been about making sure that those in economic power stay in economic power less to become like these other failed states of, South, of Africa. So public second, economic so power first. public second, those who had amassed wealth under the oppressive regime of our party than before. And that's in, who, in whose version, in, in, whose, in whose regime? In the Zuma regime, in the, in the, in the current regime? In the current <laughs> regime, and also to quite a great extent in the Zuma regime, although he was speaking a very favorable language. Right, right. Uh, before we allow uh, the conclusion to be made by 
the, uh, the, 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 the ruling party itself, the ANC in our midst. Um, can we have, is there anyone here in the panel, part of the panel, um, we can have, <laughs> perhaps we can pass through the microphone and hear what the, A the EFF certainly, a loud voice in our country here. The <laughs> Okay. I want to agree with the panelists to a certain degree, one, that uh, there is no policy direction. You'll remember that under Mandela we had RTP, then we had, we had RTP, uh, which was confused, which was neoliberal, and it was favoring uh, people who brought in money. Under Mbegu you had Kia, which moved to Askiza, so it's five Kias forward and, and, and ten Kias backwards. Under Zuma, you had uh, at the NDP, but the NDP was then, after he had EFF talking about the radical economic transformation, he then jumped from uh, NDP to radical economic transformation. What has that done? What does the African want? That's the question I would want to respond to. The African wants his land. The African wants his mineral resources. The African has always known what to do. The people who do not want the African to get what they want are the people who stand to benefit, who are security guards of white monopoly capital. My brother here talks about what is happening in DRC. DRC is being looted with the assistance of South Africans. Why are they leaving mines here and looting that side? Because Mandela made a pact with the devil to say, Mlongo, white men, we're not going to touch you your land, we are not going to touch your wealth, we are not going to touch your, your banks, we are not going to touch your minds. That's the problem. And where each time a black man speaks, they talk about uh, uh, foreign investors will run away. As if there was no life in Africa before foreign investors. The other mistake that Mandela made, which I said that he made the pact with the devil. Mandela agreed to pay a foreign debt, a debt that was accumulated by apartheid to oppress us. He comes in as a president of black people. He agrees to pay a 30 billion uh, debt to, 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 to the international community. A debt we never, uh, uh, that was used to, to suppress us. He should have said no. He had high moral ground. South Africa would be somewhere else if Mandela had not agreed to pay back the apartheid debt. That was shooting himself on both feet. Mandela sold us out. He, had a, he made a pact with the devil. 100 years of Mandela being celebrated and the EFF states Mandela sold us out. Some really, really very interesting conversations taking place here on CWTV um, today. We're going to take, um, take the comment and the last closing uh, comments by the ANC. Uh, my producer tells me I'm running out of time. Um, we need to have the ANC um, rep respond to all of these challenging comments that have been posed right here in the stage by the panel and then we go on a short break and come back where we do now are going to be hearing from the audience the very important audience and some call in and sms's remember if you would like to uh, engage with us you need to download our mobile app and uh, that's through the Play Store. Look for CWTV mobile app and download or find us on www.cw-tv.net. You will find us live as well. Or you can also um, SMS us on 082-8721332. Um, spokesperson, I, uh, yeah, you are bombarded by what your counterparts see as evidence of your 24 years of democracy and what you have done. What have you got to say? No, thank you very much. I think uh, the, the, the first part, which I think it is necessary that we, we, we correct, is that the ANC has, have, have no direction in terms of policy formulation. The ANC knows and understands where it wants to put society into. That is why the ANC has adopted the Freedom Charter as the main document that must deliver and make sure that it is the society that is going to be realized. The ANC also has subscribed into the philosophy of the National Democratic Revolution, which uh, part of the principles that the ANC must make sure that it then develop what, so it, it, it lends us into the National Democratic Society. That is the ultimate goal the ANC want to put us in. But 
there is a process of navigating through leading toward the end product. In the, in, the, in the document of the ANC, we call it a strategy and tactics. The strategy is what we ultimately want to land into. The tactic is, is, is how you apply leading toward making sure that you land into a strategy. Now, one, there was a, 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 a talk about the, the, the reconstruction and development program, which is the RDP. ANC, when it enters into government, it then forces part of the priority that let reconstruct and develop in terms of our own uh, country. But you couldn't therefore maintain that process without focusing in terms of the growth of the economy because you can reconstruct if you are bankrupt yourself. So you, you, you therefore need to reverse a bit and then apply a new tactic in terms of making sure that you consider certain factors that you have not considered before because you are confronted with challenges as you move along. But it just sounds, it sounds to me more like um, it's 24 years of doing what you're saying. It's, yes, it's 24 years. Um, your, your counterparts, your counterparts spoke to you and they're all pointing a finger at you. So each finger that's being pointed here is being answered by your first opening as to say that that is the, you know, the map. You're telling us about the map that you've laid ahead and so on and the processes and so on. But you've got 24 years in which your colleagues here, your counterparts believe that you've had way too long doing the very same. When is it actually, when are you going to get it right as the ANC? And that's by their words. But by, the, by their words, when are you getting it right? 24 years. Started that we, 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 we seem to be stagnant. The, that is why I think most of the panelists have, have cited that there is much progress that you can be able to identify in terms of making sure that there is a transformation in many areas. The people have been, uh, 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 the housing project have been uh, spread across South Africa, electrification of South Africa. There are many other, uh, well, the social uh, 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 responsibility that the ANC government has to, has to make sure that... Let's zoom into a few. I'm, I'm concerned about, the, about the, the, the issue of the foreign nationals. I would like you to zoom into that. I'd like you to zoom into the uh, concern and accusation made by the EFF. The fact that in 24 years, what you have managed to do is to loot, corrupt, and so on. I wish you to reply to that specifically. I wish you to reply to um, the cultural shock issue and, and the clear policies that are being made by um, the government and, and so forth that could speak to the same cultural shock moral issue that came through from the EFF. Um, we also have had from civil society, lack of inclusion of civil society in your implementation and so on. Yes, you may have it mapped in your policies, but implementation you still lack. So one, two, three, four, all four of them had major issues with what the government in 24 years has done. So we know that they've said the, the, the good ones. I'm not interested in the good ones. I'm interested in what the ANC has done by your, in your perspective. But I'm also interested in what the public outcry, these people represent public outcry, community outcry. So have the ANC zoom into these concerns for me. Speak directly to the accusation the, the EFF has made, quickly to what the, um, the, the Congolese organization has made, the absence of the ANC in assisting and rather the presence of the ANC in the problem within the DRC, etc. Well, I was, I, was, I, was, as I was systematically chose to start in terms of the development since the, in, the, the inception of the democracy. But let me zoom in where you are channeling me to, to go to. The, the issue with the, well, first and foremost, the ANC is an international organization. Is an internationalist organization. Uh, that is why during the, 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 the times of apartheid, it has been in hiding in many other African countries. That is why the ANC has participated in the SADC and African Union in terms of making sure that there is stability in the African uh, continent, the ANC and the government. Now, the, the, the issue that, we, that, that sometimes you, you, you want to confuse is if you speak about the business interest of a particular person, it's not, it's not a, a business interest of the ANC. The ANC had no business interest. The ANC 
develop a system, a system that must make sure that there is a peace and stability and therefore there is interaction, there is intergovernmental relations that is, de is developed in terms of the SADC, in terms of the, the African Union. Of, um, the, of, of, of APAREC, a French organization in French, also concurred by um, the EFF, his accusations of the fact that the head of state, the president of South Africa, the former president of South Africa, when you become, to make something clear, which you are fully aware of, when you become a president, it is not about yourself. It's not about you. Whatever decisions you make represent the country and the political party in which you represent. So we speak about your former boss here, who is accused of having played a part in the, the, the genocides that are taking place in the Republic of Congo. And you are being accused directly by your local uh, political party uh, opposition, the EFF concurring with that the for, what, what the foreign nationals are saying on behalf of the ANC. Speak to us about that. Look, that, that is why now I was, I was driving in terms of what are the programs the African National Congress as a governing party has within relations to the SADC program. Because the accusation is that the, 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 the leaders of the ANC are a contributing factor yes in terms of the instability. But I'm saying, on the other side, leaders of the ANC are, particip are a direct participant in making sure that there is stability in many other but countries. But what about their direct of, participation in the foreign national issue, which they are being accused of here? So in this post-democracy conversation, it had to unfold itself and lead to a Zoom-specific area, and this seems to be the, the problem, that they, your colleagues are accusing the ANC of being actually the opposite to what you state. Not that they haven't done the others, they haven't said that, but let's zoom into the main concern that they're making here, that that the leader, the former leader of the state and the party actually participated in genocides. Because if he is the problem, if he's a part of the problem, he has participated in genocide. That is the accusation that is being made by Apareko as well as the EFF here today. Can we speak and zoom into that with the positioning of the ANC as well as um, in this particular issue which seems to be burning um, here at the moment? Look, I, that is why I was... I'm, I'm trying to drive a, dis a, a discussion into the responsibility of the ANC. Because I speak on behalf of the ANC, in particular the ANC. You is it not, now, their, is it now, not their responsibility? Before you, now, you drift away, is it not their responsibility to ensure that their head of states are not being accused and are not making private and personal investments, and I take from what you said earlier, that the personal investments of its members, huh? you spoke of, of that, to basically say that it's a personal decision that the president made. But if that is what we are saying, you are representing the party. What is the voice of the party with respect to the fact that the former president of the country is being accused of being a direct problem? Look, the, 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 the ANC believe and respect the independency of each and every state and its constitutions and operations. So now, that is, that is how the ANC relate with other countries. Now, if other countries allow people to come and make their investment in terms of their account, because look, the accusation of looting, it, 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 just, it remains an accusation. There is no substantive evidence. That, that, is, that has been presented before us. That, 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 that. Where, where, I'm, 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 I'm told, I'm to, it's heating up in here. Heating up. Heating up in here. So we take a short break. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back.
if you've just joined us, you are on Tell the Journalist, a platform of Connect World Television, CWTV, a new kid on the block, um, the first of its kind online television station that will deliver you constant conversations on Tell the Journalist that zoom into some serious, robust and sensitive conversations where the host, the panel and the, the audience tell it like it is. Here on Tell the Journalist, we tell it like it is. If we're going to have an argument about it, we're going to have an argument about it until we come to a point where we find out what are we saying about the public, the public we seem to be avoiding. Remember, if you'd like to own our mobile app in order for you to hear us um, regularly and get notifications and participate on the show, you must ensure to download our mobile app through the Play Store, um, CWTV, or you can also find us on www.cw-tv.net. Um, this is now the time that I've opened for the audience um, to please uh, give us your concerns, reply to what the panel has spoken about. I'm sure it's a wealth of discussion, much to be said, and the floor is yours. The cameras are on you. You tell the world what you think. You ask them what you think. If you don't believe what they're saying is true, you challenge every point that they're making. The platform is yours. The roaming mic is available here. Um, roam the mic around to whichever speaker. Um, you can state your name if you wish. You can remain anonymous if you wish. This is Tell the Journalist. It is all well. The mics are being facilitated. Awesome. We can hear you. Uh, representing BMF Acres Black Management Forum as a public relations officer. Uh, thank you very much to be here. Uh, I can say, because we are asking ourselves where, what have we done in the past 24 years. We must be realistic here and say, uh, ANC 70 cool in the past 24 years. Even though there are challenges at uh, our corner, we cannot uh, take wrong is dead wrong as in the best at ten a plan I and say there's nothing that has been done. And again, I personally think in South Africa um, we are only politically free. The ANC was able only Uzbas Kulule in politics. We are not economically free because the land is not ours. Economy is not ours. And also, I think the challenge that we are still facing in this country is that we are still living under the, po under the acts or policies that were designed by the oppressors. This is why we would always find a black person is always oppressed in, in his own country. But our policies are in favor of the white people. A example about this land. You cannot be discussing this land after 24 years, but we are still discussing this land. This is our land, our forefathers. Like I said, they must take their mirrors away and give us our land. Uh, about going to the EFF, uh, guys have been so angry every, every time when I see you. <laughs> okay, and guys, and guys, <laughs> and guys, uh, I also, I wanted to find out from the EFF, because EFF has been formed uh, uh, not more than five years, of which it should have formed with NC in 20 years in power. And everybody knows good TFF are those people who are from the ANC. And what I'm trying to find out is that when did you see all the dirtiness that you are counting about the ANC? Ni bonele dirtiness about the ANC after or before? Or you were, were part of that in the past 20 years before you joined the EFF? When your pockets were full, you decided to go out from the EFF? You, you. And uh, can, I, can, I, can I still proceed? And we've just, we've just counted so many things that you achieved as the AFF. What I know is that the Jacob Zuma uh, was recalled by the ANC and they resigned. And I wanted you actually to clarify on that. And also the matter of land. I think it's, it's the police of the ANC. But the AFF, I think it's contributed uh, toward achieving that. And I remember when President Zuma was announcing free education. So I wanted you, uh, Chief, to, to outline on that. Uh, moving forward to the last last one uh, I, I fully understand, I fully agree with that guy from the civil society 
who said uh, ama, ama NGOs or civil society are oppressed in South Africa. Right now, you are a leader. You are, high, you are a leader leading in the top structure. I wanted to find out, actually, are you complaining here? Is there anything that you have done in order for you to challenge government or political parties? Or you will come here and complain and complain and complain? And uh, uh, wrapping up is that in South Africa, we've got a problem that black people are busy fighting alone. Uh, these political parties, all black political parties, they are busy fighting alone instead of working together and, and achieving the cause of the South Africa. I think they all have their personal agendas or their political agendas. Thank you. Well, you, you, will, you will get a turn. No, no stress, no stress. You'll get a turn. You'll get a turn. Let's, you will certainly get a turn. Don't worry. Okay, um, our audience is being vocal now. This is really, really wonderful. Uh, my sister, do you have something you'd like to add for us? Is there another speaker? Would you like to speak? Yes, hi. Okay. Uh, Kesia and the panel and the audience at large. I would like to thank Ilokus and information and whatever that they shared the panel to us. We're civil society representative. Uh, I hear you uh, complaining about uh, the civil societies are being suppressed uh, here in South Africa. So I just want to check from you, Uguti, what do you, what do you feel needs to be done in order for civil societies? Can you stand up for us so that the, the viewers around the world can, can see you? <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so uh, I sure. just want to check with you, Mozi, as you represent uh, the civil society, Uguti, uh, what do you feel needs to be done so that uh, the civil societies are afforded the space so that they can, they can uh, maneuver around to impact our nation? Seemingly, uh, it, 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 it is very clear that uh, they are totally suppressed. They can't do anything much uh, to impact our nation. Uh, I just want to check with Ubaba, Emele Ibo Diong, a religious. Uh, what are the churches have done so far post uh, apartheid era? Hence, we are here. We are, we see and we note that. Uh, uh, we see new buildings from time to time. We see fancy cars. We see lots of things. But we don't see the church impacting our nation in terms of economy. So we want, we want to find out from uh, Mr. Temba Mashaba what is it that the church has done so far and that is planning to do going forward. Uh, to ensure that they impact our nation because uh, I think the church is one of uh, the organization that holds a lot of monies, taking donations from a lot of people. I know we, we have a lot to say, guys, but you know, yes. we are in line, we are live and we are streaming. We want to make sure we keep our questions nice and punchy so they can also get an elaborative time to okay. reply to you and we can also get um, some call throughs if we have um, got, if the audience um, at home has actually engaged in terms of bringing through SMSs to us. Okay. Uh, my last point is for political parties, we are so disappointed. Uh, Lamin from IBA, a chairperson, we all about a black, economic, a black, black economic emancipation. Uh, so, in terms of the people who are in the world, they are not busy, they are not busy, they are But you seem to forget about us and the economy. In the world, we are not busy, we are not busy, we are not corruption and stuff and stuff. What, what have you done so far for the nation? Since we are paying the zindu, as a key way, the RDP houses, since we are get granted that soul, but can we now hear about the economy? The oh, community speaks. Yes. I love this. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> who is our next community vivacious person with a voice here today um, in the studio audience? Is there anybody else? I'm going to ask the second time. And we will hand over the roaming mic right back to 
Lindani, wonderful. Okay, let us hear from you. Sorry, sorry, I just need to make some space here. Okay. Uh, my name is Lindan Wagashongwan um, from the Black Management Forum. I'm the chairperson. I think Ngobam Holo Sushayagi, like we AFF, said, Begile, Umholo Amenda, when Wakchelo would say, As they look zor, now as they look zor, what do we just, a, a response as to not, not aggressively. Uh, now I'm holy. I think I can also write in the church. I, I'm now going to address the Congolese issue. I think um, for you to be able to address what it is that you are addressing in this platform, I think you need to backdate it to when the whites took over that space. Not now because Jacob and his family are also eating a piece of your land that you come and say it's South Africa that has a problem. Europeans, the Brits, and the Americans have been playing for decades in that space. I think if you see an opportunity as a businessman, never mind if you're the president or you're the president's son, you're just affiliated to the president. Not that I'm defending, but it's business now. I'm, I'm not for it. Uh, but I'm saying, let's backdate it. And I think us, all of us sitting here, it's sad because we still have people that are poor, people that we tell that the minimum wage is 3,500. You're supposed to take care of your entire family as a man or 3,500. When you guys, as political parties, sit and spend 3,500 on alcohol at one shot. So it's not fair for us to sit here and have to see our own suffering every day. We have to see people cramped up in taxis to go and work for Rumlung when the core of the problem you do not address. You tell us about the Guptas. About the day you tell me about Oppenheimers and Ruperts those people that are running our banks and those are um, um, participating 90%, 7% in SAA, uh, uh, the 97% in rail, the toll gates that they operate with their companies, then I'll say, I, EFF, you're talking. No, don't get me wrong. I'm saying don't focus on one person because you are attacking another person. Focus on us as the people because we all have problems. You sit there and you focus on the Guptas, yet you don't focus on the open numbers that fund you guys. So let's not even go there. But I'm saying now, as leaders who sit here, the time has come for us to stop fighting each other as black people. We are now saying we need to move forward as a nation, as all of us black people. These labor camps that were put on that are four square meters are not right for us to live in. We are tired now. Sorry, Kirsty, I'm just going to, last point. We are tired of having to go to work. If you come here every morning, 7 o'clock, between 6, 7 and 8 o'clock, taxis are running up and down. After 8, the bus comes in his mercs and his BMs to come and tell us when to pee, when to eat, <laughs> when to come in, when to leave. We are tired. We want participation in the economy. No longer do we want to be uh, 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 an influencer in the economy. We want to participate. Community voices, certainly. Um, we're going to um, take a short break. When we come back, we will hear back from the panel and open calls and uh, move to the next part of this wonderful program. Um, lovely communication there from the audience. We take a short break. We're back. Remember, you want to get engaged with us? Download our mobile app from the Play Store or also get uh, hooked up with us on www.cw-tv.net. Um, we take a short break. We're back.
This is what I'm talking about on Tell the Journalist. This is exactly what this show is about. Robust conversations. They are having it here in the studio. And this is absolutely awesome to hear free voice. People telling it like it is. Here on the show, we are going to have a 60-second moment of prayer where we will send out to you requests as to what you need prayed for. Here in the studio, we take a 60-second silent prayer and we pray for something. We were requested to pray for the state leaders and the new president of South Africa. That will happen in a few seconds. For just two minutes only, I am going to give this opportunity to the political parties and the unions to wrap up here in the panel and we'll go straight into the prayer session of a second. In uh, five seconds, um, political analyst Mr. Meiwa, what have you got to say? Five seconds only. You may take a seat. Thank you. Let's, let's ensure it's working. Let's ensure it's working. Technical difficulties. In five seconds, I would like to say that the African wants control and ownership of his native space, without which anything that the EFF or the ANC or the DA or the SABC and etc. can do is really a joke and just scratching the surface. So what we need first is fundamentally our dignity back, without which we cannot have anything else. Thank you. Thank you. And um, what would you like to say in wrapping in five seconds on behalf of civil society and also just responding quickly to what the lady has said, um, challenging towards you. Five seconds, um, Mr. Mpungose. Um, the challenge is, we all know in South Africa that you want our land back, which is, I think that is everyone. Beside the land back, we have black tax that is on our shoulder as citizens of South Africa, especially black people. In five seconds, please remember... So, re just to answer the question that what have I done awesome. in my own position to make sure that civil society, the space is there for them to, to actually view or to voice out their concern. Um, I have sent emails and I've called on the, the council to actually give me space to address them on the matters. It hasn't been done in Etewin as yet, but it will be happening in Inc. Because that's where I'm based. So I am, go I am actually on a process on making sure the civil society is head on the space. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, 
let us have the religious um, representative here, Mr. Tammy, um, speak to us, Pastor. Yeah, if I may answer my colleague, is that um, a person is not free if he's not psychologically and spiritually free. He's not totally free. A person can have a lot of money and mess it up with a bound mind. So what the church is doing is to educate the mind to come to a new level of being, being successful in your field, your career. The church is also encouraging education. People must go to school. It's encouraging excellence in whatever you operate in. But let me say this lastly. The concern of the church today is the issue of unity in the country, especially amongst the black parties, like my colleague said. Black parties, it, first mistake we, we make on unity, we think unity is sameness. Yet unity is not sameness. Sameness repels, unity unites. I'm afraid we've run out of time. You, you we can need work to have with your enemy. Awesome. Thank you so much. Can we have um, a closing by the political party of the uh, Apareko? Thank you very much. Um, I think it is very important as Africans um, to know that uh, while we are happy in South Africa that uh, the democracy process is g getting on and uh, the, 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 the political parties can shout the president, can get the, the president fired, we need to, uh, to, to encourage, and I encourage the F e EFF here today, to put the agenda of the DR Congo on, uh, on, 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 the, on the board so that we talk about democracy in other countries. Yes, it is individual problem that the president has invested and, uh, and it's not only uh, South Africa. There are a lot of countries involved in the, the destabilization of the DRC, but as Africans, as government of South Africa and the people of South Africa, we need to understand we, we have need to run support out of time. our, our uh, DRC people. Thank Let you. us give our representing um, the ANC, our spokesperson, no. Thank you very much. No, thank you. I think probably firstly is to, is to register that we, you, we, we, we could not uh, answer all the questions that were, that, were, that were directed to us or even allegations that were leveled against the ANC. Well, there was a, quite a, an extensive dialogue uh, between the presenter and, and myself, in particular on the issue of the international uh, 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 relations. That therefore made me unable to even cover issues that has to do with civic society and many other allegations. That, that is the first point that I, I, I think I just want to, to register first. The, the, the African National Congress is in the quest to make sure that South, it does deliver in its mandate. That is why when you, when you, you read the resolution that were taken by the, 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 the last 54th uh, National Con uh, Conference of the ANC, uh, all the decision that has been taken in, in, in Parliament, the expropriation of, of land without compensation, it's part of the resolution of the ANC. Free education has been provided by the ANC. So there are many things. It's it, it not only the issue of the social grant, but there are many programs that the ANC have made to make sure that it does intervene into the crisis of the society. But therefore, we also further want to, to make sure that the, as the ANC, we, we take the country to the next level. But we do appreciate that what makes a collapse of many other liberation movement, it is, it is in, at the center, corruption is always there. That is why people like Malema, when they were in the ANC, they were fat, they were the fat cats that were looting in, in Limpombo. The ANC does cleanse itself because the ANC is... Has, does have human uh, elements. I am and therefore the ANC does because have a responsibility to make sure. I was not having given him enough time, so I'm going to give him grace. We'll give you another minute for you to elaborate and reply to the concerns you stated did not be. We're not given enough time to yeah. reply to, so please do address these concerns in 60 seconds. Please. Thank you very much. Thank you. The, 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 the consultation, it is not true that there is no thorough consultation uh, with, the, with the civic society. That is why the ANC government has established the NADLEC, whereby the labor, the business, the civic society is a forum where all these structures must participate in the policy formulations, in the direction the society is taking. And therefore, there is a thorough consultation, and therefore NADLEC does report to government in terms of the progress that is being made. What probably the civic society can, can it, 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 I think, 
the main issue. How does the civic society itself sit down and organize itself? Because sometimes there are people that represent civic society in structures of government representing civic society, but they are not. They do not go back and account in structures of the civic society. That is the, the main issue that I think it, it is important. But I think in the main, we do note and understand that where there is human elements, definitely you'll always find people that does not drive into a particular direction. That is why the ANC continuously does renew itself in terms of the elections uh, 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 within the ANC. ANC, by the way, is the only democratic organization in South Africa that allows the participation of membership. EFF, by the way, is a bunch of angry people uh, where there is a dictatorship of one man uh, 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 who sit in, 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 in Limpompo, who give directions. That is why even, even in the province of Pazun Natal, by the way, there has never been a stable structure of the EFF. Comes this one's after that one is disbanded because it doesn't agree with the principal and therefore there is a task team. There has never, they've never had. They, at some point they just had two conferences. The other one was, was, was convened by other people who we then went back to them and said, come back to us as the ANC, uh, uh, Abu Nati Pewa and, 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 and what not. Well, by the way, Vusi Koza is, 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 is one of the former councillors of the ANC who because he was angry about decisions of the ANC, of he left the ANC and wanted to, to build the informal See? settlement somewhere uh, uh, called this EFF, is more than 60 which seconds. doesn't address the issues of, uh, of our society. The ANC in the main I, I, I does make part, uh, the, 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 the life of our people I better and moving forward. Thank you very much. For the show to come to a halt now. Thank you. Thank Have you. I given you enough time this time? Did I give you enough time, my national? Certainly. Thank you so much. Let us then have um, the reply from the, the EFF. Also in closing, just 60 seconds. Yeah. It, For it, five seconds, it, rather. It's, it's very in interesting that he admits that the ANC is corrupt. When Julius Malema was in the ANC, he was a fed kid, he was corrupt. He admitted that ANC is corrupt, so that matter is closed. That's number one. Number two, uh, in terms of what the EFF has done, in terms of what the EFF has done, in, t in terms of the what what what, what the, the EFF has done, o o o o Malema was expelled from the NC for demanding uh, e e e economic emancipation and land restitution and uh, and uh, mines. Very simple. When we said free quality education, leading fees must fall, we were competing up, and eventually, uh, what happened? They agreed to it. When we said expropriation of land, we were told it's not ANC policy. When EFF led it, they followed it, they agreed. By the way, young men, it was an EFF motion that expropriate land, which the ANC supported. When we removed Jacob Zuma, it was an EFS motion of no confidence. Because ANC wanted to save itself from that motion of no confidence, they forced Zuma to resign and he resigned and engaged me outside. And in totality, one thing that the ANC has managed to do in South Africa in 24 years is to create a welfare state, issue out grants so that there's a pool of dependents, issue out tenders so that these tenderpreneurs will forever be grateful to the ANC. They cannot think for themselves. They think if they don't vote for the ANC, the grants is going to stop. They created a welfare state. Empowerment, real economic emancipation, dololo, under the ANC. And they still love the ANC. A they still want to vote for the ANC. of knowledge and an absolute enjoyable show where people get to say it like it is it certainly has been a wonderful moment we take a short break and um before we take the short break rather we are going to take 60 seconds and silently no matter the religion that you are call on your god because we do need to pray for our state leaders around the world and right now we were asked to pray for the state um the, the president of South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa, who is arriving at a time where the country um, has got a lot of issues to be addressed, um, political issues, um, many different um, 
social problems that are falling uh, on, on in the shoulders of this man who is sitting on a hot seat, the number one man in this country. So in prayer for 60 seconds, we will ask our God to guide and protect him and ensure the protection of our economy and to, to speak the word to him that he has to put the people first, the public interest and the people first. In your own prayers, in your own way, in your own religion, let us take 60 seconds as we close the show. Well, that concludes. <laughs> it seems the EFF has closed the show for us. If you love this show, trend this show. This is a new and exciting show. Call tell the journalists we love you. Download the show. Bye-bye. <laughs>